Simple shading can turn a flat drawing or colouring page into 3D art that stands out and looks amazing. In this video, I'm going to show you a simple method to get started with shading that anyone can learn and give you some basic knowledge of the different types of shadows that you can add to your colouring pages or artwork. I recently asked my subscribers here on YouTube and my free Facebook group what they wanted to know more about in adult coloring and the biggest response was shading and shadows. So this is one of two videos I'm going to be doing about shading for adult coloring pages. In this first video, I'm going to give you a few super simple methods you can use to give any flat coloring page some depth quickly and easily with shading. If you're just starting out with adult coloring, this video will help you take your coloring to the next level. And then in my next video, I'm going to go into a little more detail and teach you how to use light and shading to bring your pages to life and get even more creative. We'll explore the basics of shadows and light sources and I'll give you some resources to help you learn to create some really cool effects on your coloring pages with a bit of practice, even if you're still a beginner. Make sure you subscribe to my channel now so you don't miss that next video. You can apply shading to any coloring page. It makes a coloring page instantly more interesting and you can do it with any color, any medium, and almost any style of page. Let me start by showing you some examples. So first I have here a page that I recently did in another video where I showed you how to color with alcohol markers. And here I actually used a slightly more complicated uh, lighting technique where I used a light source from the top corner that shone down. So if you look closely, everything on this side is slightly lighter. Everything on this side is slightly darker and everything on this side is got more shadows. So around here, we've got darker on the skin and lighter on the skin. All of my little white highlights are only on the top corners here and I have a lot more shadows around this side here. And as you can see, it creates quite a dramatic effect. Another more simple version is this one here, which all I've simply done here is added a slightly darker border around each of the leaves, which has created what we call a slight drop shadow effect. So it almost looks like these leaves are flat on the page and you've got a lamp shining down on the page and there's a very, very slight shadow. This is very easy to do. All you need to do is create slightly darker edges around your objects and it will easily create this effect. And again, it looks very effective. Another example here is where I've done some very, very subtle shading. In fact, you can probably hardly see this unless you look closely, where I've actually just used a darker shade of each color and I have done some very slight shading behind areas where the light is blocked by the objects in front. And I'll talk a little bit more about that shortly. And so each of these pencils has a slight shadow behind it, which gives a very, very subtle uh, illusion of depth in between each of the objects. And you might notice this is actually the cover that I ended up using on my Confessions of a Coloring Addict coloring book. So that's a page that I really liked how that turned out. And finally, some digital examples that I've colored with the pigment app. In this one here, I was going for a bit more realism. So I've actually done some casted shadows here from the objects where on the ground, I've drawn some shadows where I expected the light to fall. And I've drawn some shadows underneath each of the shelves here and some shadows behind these objects here. Now this is a little bit more of a complicated example like what I'll be talking about in next week's video, but you can see the potential. Here is another example that is a little bit more subtle again, but shows how you can apply this to a pattern where I've done again a drop shadow effect where all I've done is behind each object added a little bit of shading behind just with the black in this instance and it's created the illusion that these are cut out objects laying on top of each other. So again, very simple, but it definitely makes this page more interesting. So shading is done by changing the value of the color. So value is how light or how dark a color is, which is something I talked about through my short color theory basics video and the workbook that you can check out at the link at the top of your screen now. So instead of just coloring with a straight color, shading using different values of the same color in a gradient will instantly give the illusion of depth in our coloring. 
Now we can do this two ways, either by varying our pressure on the one colored pencil or by using different colors that we blend together. Because we're using colored pencils and not just drawing in black and white, I much prefer to use different colors and blend them together using the blending techniques and shading techniques that I showed you in my previous video where I created this rainbow gradient. I still want to aim for colors that are roughly the same hue or base color, but have a different value. For example, a light and dark green or a light and dark blue. And just like in my previous video, you can do this with as few as two pencils or as many as you want for a smoother transition. To keep things simple, I'm going to be using just two or three pencils for each example in this video. Something to keep in mind is that these values can go as light or as dark as you want. So you can go all the way to white or all the way to black. And the more contrast you have, the more impact your shading will make. I recommend starting out with colors that are closer together for a more subtle look, but there's nothing wrong with experimenting and trying some different effects. I'll be including this page in a huge swatch and color chart collection I've been putting together and will make available on my website in the coming months because practicing your blending and testing your values first is a great way to build your confidence and get better at shading before you start coloring. If you're a subscriber, I'll keep you updated when that becomes available. Now it's time to apply this to our coloring pages. I won't be going into detail about light sources too much in this video because this can get a little bit confusing for a beginner. So we'll go into that more into detail in my next video, but it does help to have a basic idea of how light interacts with objects. So let's go over some super simple basics. The goal of our shading is to create the illusion of light, because if we can create the illusion of light in our image, our image will begin to look slightly three dimensional. So light can come from one source like the sun or many sources, and each source of light is going to cast shadows. It can also reflect off objects or cast different types of shadows, but we're not going into too much detail about any of that today because we aren't really going for realism here. We are just wanting to add a little bit of depth at this point. Now we are going to assume there is only one light source in this image, and I even have a little light source here. It's a little um, light globe on a little button sticker thing. It's not too sticky, so it's not going to wreck my page. So our light is going to come from up towards our top left, but we're going to pretend it's a little bit higher, which I can't obviously stick it here. So I'm going to stick it on my page to remind me that's the direction of the light. But if we think in our three dimensions, it's actually coming from above. So that's something to keep in mind. Now we can use this point of light as our reminder to tell us which directions our gradients are going to go. So as a basic guide, the lightest part of our gradients are going to be closer to the light source and our darkest values are going to be further away. So we can start coloring our different objects with this in mind. So I've just picked two pencils that are a light and a dark shade of a similar color. And we're just going to pick this rose here and basically I'm just going to color every petal very lightly with the lighter section towards the top of our light source and the darker section away from the light source. Now I'll start by doing this very roughly so that you can see what I'm doing and then I will neaten it up and speed up the footage so that you don't have to watch every little bit but you'll get the idea. Now, before we go any further, I've kept this very, very simple and very light because there are a few more factors I want to cover before I start burnishing and before I go too into detail here. So one of the first things I do every time I color is choose a color palette from the color catalog. And in this case, I have printed out 
my color catalog companion for the Prisma colors because they are the pencils I'm using today. And with the help of you guys from YouTube in the community tab, we've chosen color palette number 414, which is this beautiful flower set here. So I have found all the pencils that match this palette. And what I have done on this other page is just just had a little bit of a fiddle around with some other colors as well to see if I needed to bring in any extra colors just to make sure that I had a dark and a light shade of each of these colors so that when I put them together, I actually can create those gradients to make sure I had those varying values of each color. This particular palette already has quite a lot of options because it's already got like these two colors here already work quite well in that they are very similar colors, kind of almost the same color, but in a different value. And the same with these first two, they're basically the same hue, but with a different value. So that's kind of already done for me and I will be using them on a single flower as the same color, but with that light and that dark tone. So I've tried to put them together here in a gradient. I'll add a little bit of white. I decided to throw in a bit of this other slightly lighter purple just to brighten it up. And that's my different combinations here. I haven't actually ended up adding much to it. And for my green, I've got here the green from the palette, which I've got here. And I thought I'd just try this other color, which is a slightly darker green. And as you can see, that actually matches quite well. So by adding those two together, we know that our green has the option to have our light and dark shading as well. So we're gonna use that on our coloring page now. So the first shading that we've talked about and that I've done so far is just based on the direct light and shading from our light source. Some other easy shadows that we can add are what we call occlusion shadows. These are areas of your image that light probably won't reach no matter where the light source is. So to start a new one here so that you can clearly see the difference, some examples of this kind of shadow would be in any of the little joins here because the light isn't really gonna reach them. So we can shade those areas quite dark. Any of the little corners around here. Basically any spot that you can think of that's just too tight of a gap, the light's just not gonna get in there. Now with these kind of shadows, often they will actually be quite dark. So this is where you could actually get out a black pencil, but I do recommend starting with just the darker shade of this area first. And then if you really do need to darken it up later, you can always come back in with that black pencil. I tend to avoid using a black pencil as much as possible just because it is quite a strong color to start with. And so you'll end up with really, really dark, obvious shadows. And that's just not necessarily what you want unless you're going for a really dramatic scene. Um, but that's something that you'll get better at with practice. So you can apply these shadows to your image at the start before you color anything else, or you can actually add them after you've done some of your other coloring. The key is to just do all of these things in any order before you burnish. That way you can just keep layering, tweaking, adding different shadows and keep adjusting as you go. And the final type of shadows I want to add in this example are cast shadows. These are the shadows created from objects in front of other objects that are blocking the light from reaching the object behind them. The easiest approach with this is to think about where our light source is and to think of every object in our image as if it were 3D or literally cut out of paper. Where would each shadow fall? Which objects are in front of each other? And now because I'm working on a coloring page, I usually like to pick a light source from a similar area to what I have today, which is up here. So it's easy for me to imagine a lamp on my desk casting a shadow on the patterns on my page. So in my simple beginner's version, I focus on looking at objects or patterns that overlap each other and almost think of them like paper cutouts with a torch being shone down from above. So I create a small drop shadow behind each object using either the black pencil or the dark color of the object behind them that the shadow falls onto to create a slight 3D effect that makes them stand out from the page. Using a light source from a different angle within the picture itself or behind the main subjects would create a completely different look, which is why I've decided to save that for a video of its own. If you're just starting out, this is a fun, simple approach that's fairly straightforward and looks good even if you don't get it perfect.
So with every shadow that you add, you can basically just think of them as gradients. So the darkest part of your shadows or the parts that are gonna be the most hidden from the light are the darkest part of your gradient. And as you move closer to the light, they get lighter. So even now, as I'm adding the shadows first, I'm adding my darkest part away from the light and I'm slowly using lighter pressure as I move away. So when I add my other colors on top later, this will create a very soft shadow that seems to disappear and looks very, very natural. As I'm coming towards the end of this page, you can really start to see these flowers are starting to have some depth. And as I'm doing this, I'm starting to get a bit of a better idea of exactly which flowers are sitting closer to the top and which are sitting further down below. So this is gonna help me now to add some extra detail in between the gaps between the flowers to really emphasize those occlusion shadows we were talking about. So I am gonna get out that black pencil and really emphasize these extra shadows in between the flowers to really add the extra depth in those little spots between them where the light just won't reach. And if you want to add some extra impact, you can use a white pen or white pencil to add some extra highlights in those lightest areas that will get the most light from your light source. This is something I really love doing and I've included some top tips for white pens in my previous video you can watch at the link above.
As you can see, these simple shading tricks make a huge difference to the final coloring page. And this is just the beginning of what you can do with light and shadows. In my next video, we'll explore lighting and shadows even further to create dramatic effects and moody scenes. I promise to keep things as simple as possible and give you my shortcuts to creating some amazing art without needing to learn too much science behind how it all works. Although if that's something you'd enjoy doing, it would definitely help you to improve your drawing skills in the long run. In the description below, I've included a link to my blog where I've written up this tutorial and all the resources I've shown you so you can quickly access them, including the coloring page I've used, the color theory booklet and the color catalog. Click the link at the top of your screen or in the description below to check it all out. Good luck with your shadows. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Show me your wonderful coloring pages over in my free Facebook group and stick around to watch this next video.